So welcome back. So we've just been talking to Mr. Zuri Godfrey, phenomenal scholar athlete at Howard University. So now that you've been at Howard, how has your experience been and what's the next steps for you? Yes, it's it's been great. And I'm gonna be try try to be as concise and succinct as possible, but it's been it's been a great journey and it's it's been a journey that hasn't always been bright, but the the Lord has kept ordering my steps to where I am now. And so I'll I'll start I'll start backwards. Right now, and this will help me stay succinct and be more concise. Right now, I it's two two main things in my life right now. I intern with Google as a brand strategy intern under their associate product marketing manager internship role. And and blessed to say that I'll be starting full time in the Bay Area of California with Google in that associate product marketing manager role next year upon my graduation. So that's that's awesome. That's a, what a blessing. Absolutely. Hundred hundredfold. Another thing I, I said it was really two things. The other thing is the business that I started. It's it's called Building Brand You. It's a business model focused on three pillars. So we have one and which is our, our bread and butter is brand development services. So our motto is build the person and brand the professional. So we look at our clients through twofold, both the person and the professional. And in that first pillar of brand development, we have personal development services and professional development services. On the personal side, everything from social media strategy to crafting mission statements, setting goals, et cetera. And then on the professional side, really where our revenue is driven is LinkedIn rebranding, resume revitalization, and interview prep where we've helped young scholar athletes, scholars in college receive opportunities at Google, Microsoft, just to name a few. Wow. And so and going into the second pillar, and I'll be pretty brief here, is group mentorship in which we I did a soft launch with group mentorship. We know that it takes a village here, as, as we like to say in the black community. So while one-to-one -one mentorship is great, it being a group setting is, is going to be a collective and, and comprehensive way to, to have everyone talk about opportunities to network, to develop, to hold each other accountability, uh, accountable. Awesome. And this is, and this is our, our version of golf during, during COVID. And so, we, I said I, I spoke to Soft Lunch a little bit where three people reached out to me to be mentors to them. And we were in, I, I did it before even launching the business and put them through a, a series of playbooks, meaning in that playbook, the different services that I already, already talked about. And as a result of that, one received an internship at HubSpot, one at JP Morgan, and one at PwC. So after seeing that, that it works, Incorporating it into the business as an actual group mentorship program, we are excited to announce that we actually just launched this op this November, and we we have over 80, 80 responses, over ten groups specific on job function. We have marketing, we have consulting, we have finance, entrepreneurship, supply chain management, etc. And so, the within that program is really focused on accountability development and networking. And so getting to the, the third pillar and, and wrapping up here is that we focus on career identification. So really a lot in high school and in college, because our, our business model is for students, by students with stu by students with experience, credibility, and research in, in what we do. And so being that it's for students, we know that students oftentimes don't know what they want to do as far as career-wise. So we have a robust, intensive, and engaging workshop that we we put our clients through, and one has even become a, an actress from that. Now she's not a, a Taraji P Henson, but she she is one to to be on the lookout for who has done some some great work in the, the acting space. And so just just to wrap that up, that's really my my baby build and brand you it is on, on all social media and yeah that's really the, the two things as far as the offer with google that i, I accepted and then build and brand you is my my business is is really the fruits of my labor if you will for the past four years so kind of going back 
going back through all my four years, senior year, I, I would just say internship with Google was amazing. Also did a lot of, well, well not my senior year, going out because I'm in my senior year now. Going back to my junior year in the summer, I did the internship with Google. And then also I was a management team leader within the 21st Century Advantage program, which is specific to Howard University School of Business, where all first year business students come in and they are a part of two academic semesters in a course called business orientation. Wow. And in that you have case studies, you have CEOs come in to speak. You, you are on a team with 10 to 20 first year business students. Mm -hmm. and you have you you have the first year business students as the the team and then you have the management team leaders which i i served as both uh someone who was on the team but then also as i spoke to in my junior year as a management team leader and then you have a corporate sponsor and wow. so for that corporate sponsor you do different case studies you have different visits site visits etc and so i served last year as the the management team leader and the liaison between the team and the corporate sponsor. So that's an amazing program that I was able to be a part of both as a, a participant, if you will, being on the team and then also being a management team leader. And then going back from junior year to sophomore year, I interned as a management consulting intern at PwC, a Fortune 500 company. And so really there kind of found my knack and love and passion for problem solving, which is actually one of the characteristics in my, my personal mission statement. And so just to keep a long story short, going back to freshman year is really where I, as a freshman, you don't necessarily know it all or have experience or can really gain experience from top companies because they're all looking for sophomore, if not junior and above for internship and full-time opportunities. So there, really in that business orientation class is really where I established my brand. Every company that we had, well, I want to say every company because I'm not perfect. No one is, but I, I asked questions aloud, stood up, introduced myself, asked questions to all the speakers, went up to them to get their card, asked follow-up questions after the sessions and slowly but surely mixing that and talk about and, and this time, even more important, LinkedIn, really using LinkedIn to post my, my small wins. I went to a lot of innovation and entrepreneurship pitches with the Thurgood Marshall College Fund. And so posting those things my freshman year mixed with trying to stand out and build a brand within business orientation that set my career trajectory up for, for success. And so that's my, my life story. In, in regard to college. So a couple of things I want to touch on. You talked, touched, talked about being in the business school. So, um, you know, being, I think Howard has a phenomenal business program. And mm -hmm. I know there are two different tracks kind of sort of at Howard. Um, there mm -hmm. is the honors, correct? Track. Sure. And now, so you, you're on that honors track, correct? No, I'm not. In seldomly, very rarely do you see a scholar athlete on, on an honors track because of our our schedule Makes and sense. The, the time conflicts that we have with practice with away games etc so it wouldn't be as feasible but i definitely know a lot of people within the, the honors program and kanika dean who served as really the overseer and the leader for for that program is, is awesome in connecting students with opportunities and preparing them for for the next level and for the next step in their their yeah. career I'm glad you, um, you know, said that because, um, because my son is a sophomore, I know that um, I heard about the 21st century um, advantage um, program. Is it 21st century yep. advantage? Mm -hmm. um, and I thought that was strictly for the honors students. So, um, and, you know, just speaking to everything you said, um, taking advantage of every opportunity while you're on campus is huge. Right. Like you have to, I know that a lot of times young people coming into college are a little on the shy side and still trying to figure it out. Um, but um, I remember telling all my kids, like back then it was my older kids, it used to be called like an internship office where I, I, or like field placement or something like that. But I'm like, get to know these people because these are the 
folks that are going to give you opportunity, but Howard has kind of has that built into the business school and they have phenomenal folks there helping young people. And um, so the key is, you know, taking advantage of seeking out those opportunities. I don't think kind of like we were talking about the dual degree program. I don't think they're in hiding at Howard. They're really trying to get young people out there. I like what you said about making yourself stand out and ask a lot of questions and hopefully, and I'm sure you're doing this in your business is teaching young people to do that. Like I have one young person in my house who's a little bit more outspoken than the other and whose other one is like, you know, I'm not saying nothing. <laughs> so, you know, and, but it's, it, it's, it's imperative that young people's voices are heard because you can just fade to the back. You could be brilliant and you could have a, 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 a you know, a great resume and, and, but you could also be missing some opportunities because you're not being seen. So I think that's really important. When you talk yeah, about the, oh, go ahead. Just to, just to interject there, I think that's one of the, one of the struggles that I have with Howard students, specifically in the School of Business. And I say struggle, but, and I say that very lightly, I just wish a lot more of the students took advantage of that in-person interaction, specifically in business orientation, because of now we're, we're in COVID, everyone is forced to relocate. So it's nothing like having that first impression in person. Exactly. And so yeah, just wanted to add that in there. So what do you think? So you and I are doing some of the same thing. What do you think we can do when we're talking to young people or to parents to help, you know, um, help young people, um, that's one of the reasons why I like focusing on the middle school and high school students also, because I'm thinking if you start building them up, you know, like if they're doing a, a, a program for a week or a weekend or something, um, even for a day and they're outside of their comfort zone a little bit, it, it helps to, 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 to help them mature and, and build and hear their own voice and not feel so afraid. Um, but I get it. I get the fear, but that is going to make a difference. And, um, and you being, um, selected and not All right um, yeah, and that's, a, that's a great point and you, you asked me what do I think you all can do and I honestly I would think what, what I think and it's sort of something that I as I think about it want to we can either partner with or you you take full lead on it is really having different tracks for different people because I do realize and I am self-aware that I am one who I don't know if I would call myself an introvert. I, I'm not sure. But I every opportunity I'm going to seize and take advantage of the opportunity, I'm a go-getter. I'm going to speak up for myself. I'm going to ask questions. I'm going to introduce myself. But I realize, and it's okay that other people are not like that. So maybe specifically having a, a playbook or a specific track for people who are, one, an extrovert, an introvert, and an ambivert, Right. I think, I think I said that right. <laughs> I, over, I believe in, yeah. in, in yeah. under those three headings, having practical steps that those individuals can take within their respective of being an ambivert, introvert, extrovert, what they can do to make sure that they're not missing out on any opportunities as far as internships, jobs, relationships, connections, schoolwork, you name it, so on and so forth. I and mean, this is really good because I think that we miss um, sometimes as parents the fact that when we send our kids off to school, they're 17, 18 years old mostly, and they're still young adults and young people. And they right. just left high school where, where they were being guided mm -hmm. along the way. And all of a sudden now there's like no parent teacher conferences, no touch base, and <laughs> no, no, you know, so a lot of kids can get really lost in the sauce in that, in that situation. And, and it happens, it kind of happened to me. So mm -hmm. I, I see, so that, like you said, and I, I think that's why I was really excited when my son chose Howard, because I felt like there was um, a track and there was some kind of guidance going along with it. They just weren't signed up for classes and just, but there was somebody checking in and seeing what was going on. And there was some kind of, um, of, of that going on. So like a playbook, I think is really important. I think that is huge to kind of guide folks. I was just talking to a senior in high school 
and we had a conversation about, and I gave her some steps because she hadn't started her college application process yet. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of young people are, who are in this situation remote are just like, I don't want to see another screen time or whatever. <laughs> so, so we did it real little, little steps, but I think that's really important. That if you give somebody a playbook, I've talked to many of my kids, professors, and when my daughter was at Spelman who said, you know, I don't know why you guys send your kids so far away so young because it's just a lot for them sometimes to, to, to do mm -hmm. this. So, um, you know, you gotta have, and I feel like it's important parents when you send your kids to college, I went and saw the college, I met with people and I kind of found some people on campus be like, can you be a check-in for my child? Can you mm -hmm. just, you know, like some, like a mentor, because like you wow. talked about before, the village is real. And mm -hmm. I, my children would not be the where they are if it wasn't for the village within their high school and the community and all that stuff. So that's really important. You talked about your business. What age group is that for? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so specifically, and right now, to, to be completely transparent with you, our business model is very fluid. And, and I say that because we just, we're a startup and we started in, in the beginning of COVID in March 2020. So to answer your question, specifically right now, our clientele and just with myself as the owner and founder and CEO and all the other C-suite members, overseers and service experts with all of them being at HBCUs and college, our, our target audience is college students, but we are open to expanding. And as I said, our business model is fluid. So if we do have different partnerships down the line with different organizations that could bring in some, some clientele, and I don't, I don't really like the client call it clientele, but bring in some people who who need their brand to be built. Right. And we're open to, to any age group. We're open it, to... Does it have to be a person that has a business or can it just be their brand meaning themselves and their... Because you're talking about parents also seeing this and may not understand the whole brand thing because, you know, we're, we're not from that age. <laughs> I know. I, I completely understand, understand what you're saying. So... To be clear, and, and hopefully I did communicate this this clearly, is that our our clients are individuals who who either have a brand, who don't have a brand, who don't even have a resume, can't even introduce themselves, all the way up to those who are established and just looking to make a transition as far as what what industry they're trying to go in. So any any student. Is, is our, our target audience. We, we feel that we can help them build their brand. Essentially building their brand, what that means is help prepare them to receive different opportunities, whether it be from a career standpoint, and then also from a personal standpoint, we have, as I said, to, to get a little bit more in that, which, you know, everyone really focuses on the, the professional, the resume, LinkedIn and stuff, but Really, if we could get some people early to really go through our personal brand development services, as I said, social media strategy, core values. My core values are, are faith, family, and football, goal setting, mission statement creation. My mission statement is to be a man who puts God first. My family second is a problem solver, servant leader, and hard worker. And I keep after each one saying what mine is, is because I'm not... I'm not proposing and my company is not proposing something that we haven't did ourselves. And so right. if people could really build that person and, and know who they are, or just to even get a little bit in career identification, we have a 3P model to, to find out what, what we think is best as far as career-wise for, for our clients and potential clients and students is your purpose, realizing your purpose, seeing who you are, what you're called here to do, and then seeing what you're passionate about. What makes you smile? What makes you laugh? What do you enjoy? What would you really do for fun if nobody in the world got paid for it? Yeah. And then turning that into profit in, in the essence of a job, what career field, what, who do you need to be connected with? What different levers do you need to pull right now or wherever you are to get that, that job and turn that that purpose into passion and to profit. Wow, I love that. So I'm wondering, and I'm just gonna ask this question, would you be open to working with, if there's a parent out there that's like, wow, my eighth grader could really use a conversation. 
um, or an adult or a high school student or an adult who's like maybe going into a career change or finally, so I work with a lot of women and we do a lot of self-care and uh, I have an organization called Imagine Me. And, mm -hmm. um, and so it's all about, you know, believing in ourselves. A lot of these are mothers who kids are grown or they're divorced or they're just going through a transition in life and they just want to, and put, putting themselves first for the first time and maybe mm -hmm. going back to those six-year-old dreams that they had. And it's like, okay, now I want to do my thing. So, um, you know, I'm just curious, would you be willing to work with high school, middle school or adults if they were trying to brand themselves a little differently or find their selves? Um, so mm -hmm. that's just. Um, a question to think about and you know because I know folks are going to be listening to this and I know a lot of people are looking for answers and help and I know personally by just by exposing young people to different programs last year just one example a young man whose mother did not think he would want to do a program in Manhattan at Goldman Sachs um, and I kind of begged her and she's like ah so he's not really into that he's not really into school that much he's just kind of coasting and he was a senior great kid and he did it and she said to me she sent me an email and she literally cried on the phone it was like two months into the program he was a different individual wow. mostly um brothers and sisters from hbcus that run the program at goldman sachs um, it's just housed there but it's a financial literacy program i mean they learn everything from investments to trading to um, wow. real estate the whole nine they're presenting by the second meeting they meet there every twice a month on a Wednesday night from five, at 5.30 to 8.30. So just walking into the building, I right. remember my mom's, my son, my son was the first um, student who ever uh, attended from New Jersey. So most of the kids were from New York. And I remember meeting this guy while I was, that was like a magical trip, that Martha's Vineyard trip. First time I'd ever been there. And I met this guy and then I met Obama. I was like, okay. And um, he said he had just become the executive director of this program, a Morehouse grad. And uh, so we went and my son did it. And um, they, when I was leaving, the board members were like, do you know any other kids? And I'm like, wait, we're in the middle of New York City. You don't, you can't find kids. And right. so, so now we have, I think it's probably, we're up to about 50 kids who are in or have gone through the program from New Jersey. And, uh, but powerful, these kids leave the program that summer with, with an internship, with scholarship money, with mentors. But, um, but so this young man, they have to dress, he had to put a suit on or a shirt and tie. And his mom was like, I don't even know who he is. I don't know what's going on at Goldman Sachs, but he was in the front of the room. The executive director called me and was like, who is this? Wow. And so just that little bit of exposure, just being able to see somebody who looked like him, who talked like him, who thought like him, it was like, what? So that's, that's power. So that's why I'm asking you if you're interested in the expanding, hopefully, to a younger or older uh, mm -hmm. generation to, in what you're doing. So I love what you're doing. It's, it's just very, very powerful. And it sounds like you've been doing this since your freshman year. Of, mm -hmm. of, um, and I love that about Howard that in the, in the business school and what they're instilling and some of the things you have to do um, to right. be a part of the business program. So um, I'm just thankful, man. I am overwhelmed by this conversation and everything that I've learned about you. I am so grateful that I know you didn't mention it, that you met my son at Executive Leadership Council. You yeah. guys, I guess, both received scholarships and, uh, you know, the blessings are just beyond. And, and I, I think that's the most important thing. Even if my um, children, uh, one of the biggest blessings I think they've got from being exposed in different programs outside of school is the network that they've made. Mm -hmm. That network is huge and learning how to keep that network. So I know one, one year my son said, Hey, Ma, my friend from so-and-so's lead and Wharton School of Business sent me this internship in lower Manhattan. So I'm going to go do that. And I'm like, Oh, wow. So like, you know, that's the golf, right? There you go. You guys are now sharing with each other and, and all that good stuff. So I'm very, very proud of you. Um, I know your mom, your family is just extremely proud of what you're doing and you could just be doing you, but you are doing so much more. And as an athlete, I love that. I, so have you considered or thought about playing outside of college or you're going to end your football career at, at Howard pretty mm -hmm. much? Yeah, I'm to, I, I can start with the answer and elaborate a little bit more, but yep, I'm going to, I'm going to end my career as a Howard Bison 
on the football team. And really, honestly, and I, I try to share this with a lot of students growing up and specifically where I'm from, I'm not necessarily from a, a low income or impoverished area, but it, it really is still within the black community. You're either gonna rap, you're gonna play sports and that's how you're gonna get out. And so honestly, I, I guess, quote unquote, I got out through sports, but then I, I realized I had to change my perspective and I very appreciative of, of my mom for this because I, I would always say I'm going to Howard to play football. She was saying, no, you're going to Howard to receive a business degree. Yeah. And that, that, that really stuck with me and really changed my outlook on things as far as from an athletic standpoint. Let, let athletics be a revenue. I mean, uh, not a, a revenue, but a vehicle, like, yeah, a vehicle right. to other opportunities. When recruiters see that you're a Division One athlete, it's, you, you're already a level above. You're already a step ahead. So really using this to empower it. And one of the things that I, I try to tell my teammates and try to tell a lot of people is, even with, with a lot of CTE coming out, why not work in the NFL versus playing in the NFL? Wait, why not? Wait, wait, what was that CTE? Yeah, see, so CTE is, is really comes from the head damage that, that football players. Okay, um, okay, that's yeah. right. okay. Like the right. and stuff, okay, I got you. Yeah, and so it's really big now as far as, there's a movie about it, I think, with, with Will Smith about fo football players and that head-on collision. And that's what I'm saying, being smart and thinking long-term, why don't we, yes, play the game, and then, and even right now I'm in an externship with the NFL, so this, this is kind of, kind of all coming full circle, but wow. why not work in the NFL versus playing? You can if you're if you're a part of that one percent who does make it from college to the NFL, then great. But what about that other ninety nine percent? Right. Why don't you learn and, and be in a school that in a major that provides you with the avenue to work in something that you love? And it's a it's a better and more competitive advantage, specifically for us black brothers and and women who who play other sports. Right. Is if I if I say I was going to work at the NFL, being that I've been a player for six years, I already know how in player engagement goes. I know how to speak the, langu the language and the jargon that they're doing. So I'm already a step ahead, and they can't really say anything as far as a professionalism standpoint and a, in a personal standpoint in the NFL because I played the game. I, I know these people. And then from a business standpoint, I went to the school of business who who, who was arguably – one of the, if not the best, HBCU school of business. So I right. uh, just, um, just wanted to, to share that. No, that's really important. I'm glad you said that because I think there are a lot of young people who are athletes and a lot of parents who are pushing the athletics, but it is a it is a 1% chance. And, you know, one of the things that I would love to see change is a lot of these opportunities. Um, I know my son, when he played baseball, did a, uh, as a junior in high school, did a program on the weekends at a local university that gave him three business credits and it was just uh, Saturdays and it was $50. And you know me, I'm like, yo, you're going to do this. And, yeah. he's a baseball. and so he never missed a game, but uh, he was benched because uh, he missed a Saturday practice. And, you know, a lot of young people weren't able to do some other programs. And so I've been, especially with the athletes this year that are not playing sports, I'm like, jump on these remote programs. Yeah. This is your time. But it makes me feel a little bad because I have another friend whose son did um, play the football for Stanford. And, um, and you know, you get – so it's kind of like – and I know my son had to kind of make a choice by his senior year. It's like, okay, am I going to do this or that? Because if I'm not really going to go and play baseball, then I need to start looking at some other opportunities that is going to get me um, into college and some scholarship money, et cetera. So I think that's unfortunate for athletes, especially football, because I have a friend whose son is a freshman – and she's like, girl, it's every night. <laughs> it's every single night. So I was talking to my other friend whose son played at Stanford. And I was like, well, why is that? And she's like, because you have to be prepared because you could get hurt. So it has to be like that. So um, my sons wanted to play. And my husband was like, nah, you got to do your homework. <laughs> so it was kind of like, you know, so it's hopefully there can be a balance and we can find opportunities for, for athletes too, because I know that's a big deal. Um, for young people to have that outlet 
and that accomplishment. Um, but, you know, for any athletes or um, in high school or college listening, you know, it's not the end of the world if you don't get to the next level. Um, right. And like Zuri was saying so eloquently, you know, have another game plan and, uh, and actually make that other game plan your first game plan. Right. And uh, because the opportunities are so much more, um, there are so many more opportunities than you fitting in through the, like the eye of a needle is what getting into a major league or anything is. So, um, and not, not get depressed or anything that can come with that and utilizing that those skills maybe you have to maybe to take that to the next level. So I know a young man went to law school and is now doing, working with the NFL in that. Mm -hmm. So so I'm excited. So listen, how can people find you, get in touch with you? And what's, what are some parting words? And first of all, when do you start at Google? When do you actually physically start there? Do you know? September 7, 2021. <laughs> oh my goodness. I have never in my life known anybody who had a job offer while they were still in college and like so far in advance. Like this is like a year in advance. Right. Yeah. A blessing. Yeah. Wow. Wow, that is huge. Wow. I like it. want to get your autograph and all of that. So <laughs> well, I have never, I have been to Northern California, but there's a lot of parts that I didn't get to see because we were only there briefly. Um, but mm -hmm. uh, so we got to come out and visit you when all this craziness is over and oh, uh, everything. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, any parting words, any advice you'd like to give um, our audience as well as how folks can contact you? Absolutely. And I'll, I'll start with the parting words and really it, it can be summed up into really two facets and so it's it's one faith and having that ground you in, in all that you do is really is really important especially especially now than ever given COVID where we, we're all forced to be in isolation and home alone really grounding yourself in your faith and knowing what you believe and letting everything flow from there Yes. And then the second thing, and it, it kind of ties into faith because, and this is this is one of the things that I'm I'm gonna state here. I need to coin this, but you know how because the second piece was relationship building and or networking, and so you know how with the networking and relationship building, everyone says it's all about who you know. Mm. It is, and going back to the first part, it's all about who you know in that piece, and then also who you know as far as the networking standpoint. So make sure that you get in contact with those who are where you want to be Amen. and get in contact specifically. If you can't reach them, get in contact with those who report to him or her or who work alongside him. So those would be the, the two things that I, that I, I leave you all with here today. And as far as contact gave me, uh, everything is personal and professional. So personally, I'm very, very transparent, very out there on social media. My social media handle for all socials are at Zuri Godfrey. That's at Z-U-R-I-G-O-D-F-R-E-Y on all socials. And professionally with the brand and with the business, it's at Build and Brand You. And so on, on Instagram, it's Build, B-U-I-L-D and a and d brand b r a and d u y o u and, and on linkedin it's building brand you but the and is actually the symbol the and symbol so that's how you all can get contacted with me and feel free to reach out i'm very responsive within 48 hours give or take so uh, i thank you all for having me here and hope to to hear from a lot of you all watching today yes wow Thank you again. What a blessing. I mean, I feel like you're like one of my sons. I feel like I could talk to you all day long. And I just want to thank you for taking time out of your schedule. Um, I know you're in the middle of school right now and taking time to talk to me and, and help us launch Power of Exposure. Um, please feel free to share this information with any of your other phenomenal, because I know you usually roll in the same circles, um, because I think it's just powerful for young people to see themselves down the line. And what you said is so important. And sometimes young people are afraid to reach out to other folks. And what I've learned about successful people is that they usually want to give back. They right. generally want to give back because they always remember who believed in them and who helped them. 
So I say, don't ever be afraid to ask. If someone right. doesn't respond or says no, then that's okay. But it's no love loss. You just right. move on to the next person. You right. Know? And uh, there's never a person, and the worst thing that they can say is no. So. Amen. Amen. Close don't get fed. It's another another saying that I will go. Yes. Well, I want to send you many blessings in Hampton, Virginia. Stay safe and um, just keep doing what you're doing, making us proud. We just look forward to so many phenomenal things from you in the future. And um, thank you. Thank you, my brother. Thank right. you. Thank you for having me, my, my sister. And I love what you're doing here with Power of Engagement. And I will follow up with you and, and send you someone that I think you should definitely get on here. Awesome. Great. All right. Take care. Have a wonderful day. Bye. You as well. Bye-bye. So I just want to say thank you to everyone who tuned in today to the power of exposure. We just spoke to a phenomenal, phenomenal young man, Zuri Godfrey, a senior at Howard University, already signed his contract to work for Google out on the West Coast. A student athlete, football player doing phenomenal things, has his own company. We'll share all that information with you so you can contact him. But thank you. What a great way to start off. Thank you again. Have a wonderful day. See you soon.